Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would talk about this video and this topic that I found very particularly interesting. And I do apologize to a certain amount of people or for those of you that may be newly subscribed or for those of you all overall that have been all around subscribed to my channel for not posting as many videos probably within the past couple of weeks, but I just personally haven't seen any topics that have really sprung my interest. So of course I wanted my videos to be organically a little bit more interesting. But this video really piqued my interest because I heard this news, I believe about a few days ago, somewhere around ESPN because I have the app on my phone and I seen the same news that Mr. Boxing Ego seen here. And what Mr. Boxing Ego is going to talk about is the potentiality of there being a Josh Taylor versus Tiafima Lopez fight, which I think, to be honest with you, really is a terrific fight. Now, in my opinion, if we're just going to talk about that fight on paper, I think that Tiafima, at least at 140 pounds, that may that he may be a little bit outmatched, at least overall, for the current point in his career. But on paper, and especially with the promotion, it is truly a great matchup. I'm not really sure if the fight is going to be on pay-per-view, necessarily but i do think that it is a fight worth watching no doubt about it and this is going to be a very particularly interesting fight because josh taylor of course in his last fight he probably had the worst performance in his career that i've ever seen against former english excuse me against fellow englishman jack catterall i believe that josh taylor personally just lost that fight i, th I believe by a point or two i think i scored the fight for jack catterall by one point and of course, Josh Taylor ended up getting the decision. It was a little bit controversial, but it was a very close fight. So I'm not going to call it a flat-out robbery. But in my opinion, Jack Catterall did win the fight. But a Josh Taylor versus T. Fima Lopez fight really would be very particularly interesting. Because it would show us truly how great Josh Taylor and also how great T. Fima Lopez actually is. Is Josh Taylor going to get back in the ring more motivated than last time? More than likely, in my opinion, he probably is. Is he once again going to show his elite abilities, at least at 140 pounds? And the bigger question is, is about Mr. T. Fima Lopez. What is he going to be able to do in this fight? Is he actually going to be able to pull through? And is he going to be able to get another big win in his career and somewhat revive his career? Because, of course, of in a fight not too long ago against that of George Cambosis Jr., he was upset. Now, some people personally do not say that it was an upset. In my view, it was because... I was not expecting Cambosis to beat Tifima Lopez, but if you're one of the ones that predicted Cambosis to beat Tifima, of course, kudos to you. Good on you. I personally didn't because I thought that he was a weaker version of Tifima, but in my opinion, I think that Tifima very clearly did not take him all that seriously. But the biggest question now is this. Tifima Lopez was on top of the world when he was able to beat the former number one pound for pound fighter, in my view, in Vasily Lomachenko, and of course, in many other people's opinions as well. He was on top of the world, and he was looked at as a guy that was the best at 135 pounds, at least with his resume. But he showed a lot of his faults, and he showed overall a little bit of his hubris, overall and a little bit of his cockiness overall, in that of the George Cambosis Jr. fight, and it ended up costing him in that fight. The big question is, is this, can he actually beat someone like a Josh Taylor? Because the biggest test in someone's career is when they finally face someone that can not only compete overall with their abilities, but also compete with their size, also compete overall with their power, also compete with their athleticism. And that's eventually how you can truly tell who is really an all-time great fighter and just a fighter that is a very, very good fighter or, you know, decently great. We're going to see a lot about both Josh Taylor and Tiafima Lopez in this fight. We're going to see if Josh Taylor, if he just had a little bit of a slip-up, or maybe if he's not as good as what we once thought, and we're going to see with Tiafima Lopez what is truly inside him as a fighter, not only his courageousness, not only his heart, we're also going to see his boxing IQ, his boxing intelligence, and what he's done to improve himself as a fighter. So I think it's going to be very particularly interesting. But anyways, Boxing Eagle is going to talk about it. I'm going to tune in. thought it was very interesting. Let's get into it. Could we get Teofimo Lopez versus Josh Taylor in the UK? ESPN reports that this is on the table, something that is being looked at. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Boxing Ego quick hits, less intro, less filler, let's get it. So ESPN is reporting top rank is planning 
a Josh Taylor, Teofimo Lopez Jr. welterweight title fight this summer in the UK, sources told ESPN. But no deal has been struck yet at 140 pounds. It's a 140-pound fight. If it's finalized, it is expected to take place in May or June, the sources said. So ESPN getting tipped off to that particular particular fight. My thoughts. I like it. I think it's a good fight. I think it's also kind of a crossroads fight. Josh Taylor, the thing I do I agree 100% that it is somewhat a crossroads fight, or I'm not really going to say 100% a crossroads fight, because I think a crossroads would basically mean that for both of them, that the career is going to end. But you know what? At the same time, someone could very much argue that this is very much a crossroads fight, even for Josh Taylor. Because if Josh Taylor ends up losing this fight, the rest of his career may not pan out overall very, very well. Because he is clearly going to be the favorite in that fight against Tiafima Lopez. And if he is not able to beat Tiafima Lopez, it's going to look very bad on him, in my opinion. So I do agree with Ego to a degree overall that this is a crossroads fight. I don't like about it is Josh Taylor. I definitely thought he lost to Jack Catterall. I don't know what you guys seen. I watched the fight in real time the day it aired. Thought he lost. That being said, I think Catterall... I thought that Josh Taylor ended up losing as well. But you know what's very, very particularly interesting? And this is also another reason why I wanted to do this video. When you see in these certain channels, like a Boxing Eagle or a Dante's Boxing Nation or an Aki TV, and they were telling you all this bullshit about, oh man, Josh Taylor, he's a top five pound for pound fighter. And, you know, overall, he's above fighters like Canelo and Lomachenko and all that stuff. And, you know, right now, he certainly would be above a Lomachenko because Lomachenko doesn't have any belts. But, <laughs> you know, the reason why I never put Josh Taylor in my top five pound for pound, and don't get me wrong, I would understand if you put him there somewhat, but I just don't think that he is. But I know the main reason why Dante's Box Nation and some of these other channels put him there, and the reason also why they promote David Benavidez and some of these other fighters overall, because they can promote them overall, and they can use them. They overall don't promote any certain some of these fighters unless they believe personally that they can use them. And as soon as they use their, or excuse me, as soon as they lose their use, or as soon overall as they very clearly aren't as useful as what they once were, they are, I'm not going to say 100% throw them under the bus, but they're not going to be as important anymore. Because Josh Taylor, when you take a look at their top 10 pound for pound list, they don't even have them in their top 10 anymore. You would think for a guy that, yes, even though he came off of a controversial decision, you would think overall that a guy like this would be within the top 10 pound per pound because apparently recently he was just top 5 pound per pound. The only reason why they ever ranked Josh Taylor in the top 5 pound per pound was because of Terrence Bud Crawford or Errol Spence Jr. beat Josh Taylor. They could say, wow, take a look at that. He ended up beating a top 5 pound per pound fighter so he could compete with the likes of Canelo Alvarez and all those other guys because even they knew that if Terrence Bud Crawford defeated Josh Taylor, that it would not be the same as a Gennady Golovkin win when Canelo Alvarez was able to beat Gennady Triple G Golovkin. Those are just the facts of the matter. Some people are not going to like that. I really don't give a shit. It is what it is. All right? So it is what it is. Like I said, for all of a sudden, when he ends up losing the Jack Catterall, there's none of these channels overall that stick up for Josh Chandler and say, oh, well, you know what? He could have potentially won the fight. All these guys believe that he lost the fight, and they're correct to say that. That's the correct assertion. I believe that he ended up losing the fight as well. But it's interesting because some of these guys, they tell me, oh, these guys, they don't have a racial motivation. They don't use these guys. What are you talking about? But yet they defend Deontay Wilder, Jamel Charlo in their controversial decisions tooth and nail overall. They'll debate that Jamel Charlo, that he debatably won the first fight against Brian Gastano and that Deontay Wilder, probably in one of the biggest robberies I've ever personally seen in my life, or Tyson Fury, probably clearly should have won that first fight. They say overall that the fight was super duper close. But then when it comes to Josh Taylor, none of them are saying that he could have won the fight. Why is that? Once again, he's lost his use. Josh Taylor is no longer a top five pound per pound fighter, so they can no longer use him. Now, don't get me wrong. If the Terrence Bud Crawford fight potentially happens, they're probably going to try to propel him up once again. Uh, but when it comes down to it right now, he doesn't have as much use because he didn't look that great in his last fight. And on top of that, it looks like Terrence Bud Crawford versus Josh Taylor is not going to happen anytime soon. So as soon as Devin Haney, as soon as Shakur Stevenson, as soon as, some, as soon as some of those other guys popped up on the map, they said, let's put these guys over Josh Taylor. 
even if Josh Taylor has a better resume than them, which in my opinion, he does. He has a better resume than a Devin Haney and a Shakur Stevenson. Now they're around the same level, in my opinion, of pound for pound status because Josh Taylor ended up winning by a controversial decision. But that just goes to show you what their true motivations actually are. Was owed a rematch, but every time they scheduled the rematch, it was like better be versus deity or one of them fights. Better be of was scheduled to fight this dude, and time after time, like the first time was because of the CVID 19, the virus and the pandemic that canceled the fight, and then they rescheduled it, and then somebody got injured or whatever, and it kept getting canceled. That's exactly what happened with Josh Taylor and Jack Catterall. I think this fight has been scheduled on the books two times, and whatever happened both times, the last time. They said Josh Taylor was injured, whether that's true or not, whatever. They're saying he's injured. I broke my back. Now, that's interesting. You hear Mr. Boxing Eagle saying whether that's true or not. Now, when Jamel Charlo most recently came out with an injury, or when Deontay Wilder allegedly came out with this bullshit excuse of how he had this dent in his head and all that bullshit, which was never proven uh, by a doctor or by an x-ray, Boxing Eagle and some of these other channels, they fought tooth and nail to prove that their injuries were real. But with Josh Taylor, because he no longer has use to them, uh, they basically say, oh, well, you know, Josh Taylor, who knows if the injury is real or not? Now, who knows? Maybe Eagle's being a little bit more objective than what I'm getting, giving them credit for. Uh, but that goes to show you, once again, some of these channels' motivations. Uh, once again, Josh Taylor, as soon as he has lost his use, they treat him just like any other fighter. Overall, that, well, I'm not going to say they don't treat him like any other fighter that they don't like. They, of course, like Josh Taylor more than a Canelo and some other guys because they can use him. But when it comes down to it all in all, once again, it just goes to show you that uh, they don't like Josh Taylor overall as much as some of the other fighters that they clearly like to promote. All that was so they could use him. I, I broke my back. It's spinal. The doctor said it was spinal. You know, he got spinal or whatever else is going on with him. So that fight is scrapped. This is a bigger fight, but me being who I am, a guy who's congruent with his thoughts and has integrity, I still like to see people get their just due. Jack Catterall. Well, you like to see people overall get their just due if you ended up liking that fighter. Uh, because with Tyson Fury, Canelo Alvarez, and right now Terrence Bud Crawford, <laughs> I'm not going to say that you're completely always uh, biased with some of the points, but there has been certain points, in my opinion, where you clearly... Have stated certain bias points or points overall that were not congruent. Really was owed a rematch in this equation. So he gets screwed, you know, by not being in the position to fight against Josh Taylor. Like, so he just didn't fight, didn't fight. All these, like, pullouts and fight gets canceled. And then they go a whole separate direction. You know, it's, it's kind of blue balls for Jack Catterall. Hopefully he can get the winner. We'll see. The reason I call this a crossroads fight is because I thought Teofimo, him too, lost his last fight against Sandor Martin, Martin or whatever, from Spain. Don't think Teofimo looked great. And Isn't that interesting once again that Teofimo, now once again, I don't necessarily have a problem if you thought that Teofimo Lopez lost. But once again, isn't it so interesting? People always tell me, oh, you just you just don't like these guys. You know, you just don't want to admit the truth and all that bullshit. Listen, dude, on every, <laughs> uh, on a lot of my videos overall, I, you know, I talk about the double standards of certain channels, but also about certain other videos. I also talk about the double standards against black athletes and black fighters. I get some of these guys on my channel sometimes and they're like, oh, you know, what, what, are you, what, what, what are your true motivations and your biases are bullshit. Uh, once again, listen, uh, isn't it interesting that when it comes to boxing ego, Deontay Wilder debatably could have won the Tyson Fury first fight. And, you know, uh, what's his name? Jamel Charlo debatably won the first Brian Gastano fight. Two decisions that, in my opinion, were very, very poor. Uh, but then when it came to Tifima Lopez and Jack Catterall and all that, oh, oh, apparently he sees those very, very clearly. <laughs> and that's pretty much all the LDBC and new media channels mainly. That's why they cannot mainly be trusted. And don't get me wrong, the majority of people are not to be trusted with the judging contest because most people look at it in a favorable lens. So if you want a certain fighter to win, you can actually truly believe that a certain fighter actually ended up winning because you're not really paying attention or you don't put as much emphasis on the other fighter's punches. I know that because once upon a time I used to do the exact same thing.
He's already lost to George Cambosos. I thought he lost to Sandor. And they gave it to him anyway. I thought the fight overall was very, very close. If you gave it to Sandor Martin, I didn't have a problem with anyway. it. But, so, and I don't know why that <laughs> didn't pause. But once again, I didn't have a problem with it. But I just thought that Sandor Martin's offensive attack, I just thought that it was way, way, way too light. Now, had he threw a little bit more, had he thrown, like, let's say overall, probably about 100 more punches in that fight. And some people may say, wow, that's a lot. Not really when you talk about in certain boxing terms. And, you know, some people overall, you know, may disagree with that. Uh, but there's certain fighters out there that <laughs> they throw about 300, maybe 500 punches in a fight. And, of course, those are the elite stamina guys. But, listen, at the end of the day, Sandor Martin should have threw more. He really was only landing anywhere from three to five impactful punches per round. Now, a lot of the times, Teofimo Lopez, he wasn't landing cleanly either. But he clearly was the pressure fighter. That doesn't always win you the fight. But it can win you the fight, especially overall if you're pushing forward. It looks like you're trying to attack more. And the other fighter's really just not throwing that much. In my opinion, Sandro Martinez, no one else to blame but himself. Oh, he's in the same position as Josh Taylor, where the last performance he had at 140 pounds was <laughs> anything less than impressive. It just, just didn't do it. And it was kind of against a similar guy, a tricky... I agree. A guy on the know that I believe both of them were southpaws. They're mainly going to use that one too. Uh, decently slick, in my view, to be honest with you. Now, maybe I'd have to see more Jack Catterall. I think Sandor Martin is probably a little bit better than Jack Catterall. But, you know, I, I think that Josh Taylor probably just either A, did not take him as seriously or tried to fight in a style that probably was not, pref you know, preferable in that fight. But we'll see what happens. I could be wrong. Who knows? Jack Catterall could, you know, dominate Josh Taylor in a rematch. We'll have to see. You know, a great fight, actually, even though most people would think this fight is boring, but I'm a guy that likes to see all types of matchups. I'd like to see Jack Catterall versus uh, Sandro Martin. That'd be a great fight. That would, that would almost be like when Arizona Lara fought Austin Trout. Not big puncher, but a tricky guy who's in there to box and complicate and make you look bad and pretty slippery and stuff. Sandro Martin and, again, Jack Catterall. So they were both, like, big punchers, like, Consider boxer punches with a big punch, and they both faced the tricky style and a slippery guy in Sandro Martin and Jack Catterall, and they neither one of them passed the test. So if they're going to fight each other now without redeeming themselves, meaning Tio Fimo is not going to rematch Sandro Martin, and Jack Catterall is not going to get another shot with Josh Taylor, he's not going to rematch. Catterall. Well, in my opinion, the rematch with Sandro Martin that's just not going to happen. And some people may say, oh, well, you know, and Boxing Eagle actually brings up a good point. I agree with him on this point to where he says that many black fighters, you know, to the fans, they always have to rematch certain people, uh, you know, when certain fans are not satisfied with the result. And I agree with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, just taking a look at things from a more uh, different approach, I mean, it's just not going to happen with Sandor Martin. Because when you talk about the rematches, like let's just talk about black fighters with rematches. If you're talking about Andre Ward against Sergey Kovalev, if you're talking about Jamel Charla versus Brian Gastano, or Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, all those were almost pay-per-view worthy fights. Uh, when you talk about T. Fima Lopez versus Sandor Martin, like really nobody wants to see that rematch, at least unless you want to see T. Fima really lose. It just is what it is. <laughs> like, you know... Uh, it's, you know, because no one else is really calling for that fight besides Dante and Boxing Ego. I'm not saying that overall the rematch would be the worst thing in the world, uh, but it's not going to happen, especially from a business perspective. It's not going to happen. You know, for those of you that remember a fight very long time ago, Miguel Cotto once upon a time fought Joshua Clotty. For those of you that don't remember Clotty, Clotty, I believe, was a Ghanaian fighter. He was from Africa. Uh, gave certain fighters a little bit of problems. Gave Zab Judah a tough fight. Ended up winning the fight, I believe which isn't a shock because Zab Judah pretty much ended up losing every big fight in his career. Uh, but when it came down to it all in all, he gave Miguel Cotto a very tough time as well when Miguel Cotto was somewhat in the revival period of his career because that was after he lost to Antonio Margarito. But a lot of people actually believe that Joshua Claudi won the fight. In my personal view, I had Miguel Cotto winning at least seven rounds to five, if not even eight rounds to four because I don't think that Joshua Claudi threw enough. But, you know, when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, that rematch never happened. And a certain amount of people wanted to see the rematch. But <laughs> from a promoter's point of view, and overall from a boxing business point of view, that's just not going to happen. Because Joshua Claudio really doesn't have a lot of 
outside appeal. Uh, it's the same thing overall with the Sandor Martin. Not a lot of people are going to want to see the Sandor Martin rematch. Now, a George Cambosa's rematch later on maybe could potentially happen. Or Josh Taylor rematch, you know, if that fight ends up being super close to that, that's a rematch that can happen. Uh, but promoters and fighters on the know, they're not usually going to rematch someone, especially overall, that isn't that great uh, overall because it's just, just not going to happen. Because overall, it's just too uh, much risk overall for way, way, way too little reward. Way too little reward. Like, I remember when Jamal Charlo was against Matt Korobov. And to be quite honest with you, you can actually debate that Jamal Charlo ended up losing that fight. He looked very bad in that fight. But that rematch never happened. You never hear Boxing Eagle talk about, oh, well, that rematch needed to happen. You know, Matt Korobov ended up getting screwed, you know, in that fight or, <laughs> or some of this other stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, once again, that's not a rematch that a lot of people want to see. And that's just how it's going to go. So the Sandor Martin fight, that's not going to happen. Sandor Martin can kiss that goodbye. He had his opportunity. Uh, he didn't have the worst showing, but he sh definitely should have had a better showing. Uh, basically, the lesson is to him is that if you're going to face someone who especially is the A-side, someone who is one of the bigger fighters in the sport, you better put every ounce of effort in the fight. And who knows? Maybe Sandor Martin, for him, maybe that was every ounce of effort, but that's just not good enough. That's why there's levels to boxing. Okay? Bro, then they're going to go straight. This kind of a crossroads fight because you didn't redeem yourself. And the, the other thing I got to say, it's funny how old media, when you have the complexion for the protection, all the old media fighters that they love so much and praise, they never have to do rematches to controversial fight. And here we go over with this point. And I somewhat agree, but Mr. Ego, you're pretty much the same. <laughs> because once again, I've never heard one of these channels say, you know what, that Matt Korobov versus Jamal Charlo rematch, that really should have happened. You know, why Why did that fight never happen, you know, when it came down to it? Or, you know, uh, Deontay Wilder versus Arthur Spilzka or so, some stupid bullshit like that. Now, I'd have to actually rewatch that fight. It's been so long since I watched that. But let's be real. <laughs> you know, like, are you calling for a Rolly Romero versus Javante Tank Davis rematch? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, Lomachenko could lose to Teofimo, no rematch. Lomachenko loses to Salido, no rematch. Lomachenko has a split decision win over Gary Russell. No rematch, even though Gary Russell called him out, right? And Dude, but Gary Russell got dominated in that fight. Like, these guys, these these LDBC and the media channels, they always want to say, oh, well, Lomachenko, uh, you know, that fight was a lot. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was a clear eight rounds to four. Gary ended up getting dominated. There's no need for a rematch. Gary Russell overall can take his ass somewhere else, and if he wants to prove himself, he's going to have to beat somebody else. So on and so forth. I could think of very, like, Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez will be uh, in a tough fight with Lada, never has to rematch him again. You know, Tyson Fury, Otto Violin, didn't have to do an immediate Wilder rematch and went to fight Tom Schwartz and all these other things. But let it be a black fighter from America like Jermail Charlo Castano and his controversial immediate rematch. Andre Ward versus Kovalev, immediate rematch. Floyd Mayweather and people said, oh, Madonna, it was a draw. Well, I somewhat agree with you, Mr. Boxing Eagle, but let's also bring up this point. Uh, once again, all those fights that you're bringing up, those are headlining type of fights. So once again, I would have to see, is it really that they're overall black fighters? And don't get me wrong, I think that that's a part of it because there is a certain amount of hate against black fighters uh, overall, and people want to see them go down at least, you know, some of the time. So I understand Mr. Ego's point. Uh, but a lot of the examples that you're bringing up, those are literally like pay-per-view worthy type of headlines. Uh, now, one could bring up overall the point of Lomachenko versus Tiafimo Lopez, but Lomachenko wanted the Tiafimo Lopez rematch. Uh, Tiafimo overall, uh, I believe, did not want it. Oh, okay. And that's not me saying that he avoided Lomachenko, but Tiafimo obviously believes that he does not deserve another shot. Media rematch. Floyd Mayweather at Castillo, immediate rematch. Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, immediate rematch. All of these instances, you get an immediate Well, <laughs> wait a minute overall uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, Roberto Duran ended up beating up. Rematch. Roberto Duran ended up beating up Sugar Ray Leonard in the first fight or beating him. So that's, that's not really a good example. And it's almost required. But when it's Josh Taylor looks sus versus Jack Catterall, he don't have to ever fight him again. You got Teofimo who loses to Cambosis and leaves the weight class and doesn't ever have to fight him again, right? 
Teofimo, I thought he lost to Sander Martin, a.k.a. Controversy. So if Ward fights Kovalev and some people, not me, but some people thought Ward lost to Kovalev, he had to redeem himself from the quote-unquote public's mind or the doubters who thought he didn't beat Kovalev. But Teofimo, people don't feel he beat Sandor Martin, but he got to rematch him. You see what I'm saying? So it's a good fight at 140, kind of a crossroad fight. I think a better example of what Boxing Eagle is trying to bring up would be the Javante Tang Davis versus Isaac Pitbull Cruz fight. Because there's a lot of people overall that would call for that fight. And Isaac Pitbull Cruz, there's just not a great amount of appeal about him. So I agree with what Mr. Eagle was saying uh, to a degree. I just don't think that the Andre Ward and Sugar Ray Leonard and <laughs> Deontay Water, Tyson Fury, I don't think that those are good examples because those are really pay-per-view headlining fights. And Jamel Charla versus Castano, I just don't think those are good examples. Now, if you want to bring up Javante Tang Davis versus Isaac Pitbull Cruz, uh, you know, you got a great point there. Or maybe if you want to bring up, you know, maybe something else, uh, I'm not really, you know, quite sure. You know, maybe Floyd Mayweather versus Maidana, if you wanted to bring that up. But Floyd, every every event that he has is a pay-per-view headliner. So I'm really not even sure if I can bring that up. But I understand where Ego was coming from. May the best man win um, in the UK. That's the better location for it to make money. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Isn't that interesting? The UK is in the better uh, place for it overall to make money. Isn't that interesting? Because whenever it comes to Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua or some of these other guys, they're like, oh, well, why can't they come to America? Uh, is that overall because <laughs> you mainly want to see Tiafima lose the fight? Or is that from an objective standpoint? Uh, once again, I won't go too hard on Ego here. Who knows? Maybe he's being a little bit more objective than what I'm giving him credit for. But that's just personally some of the things that I've noticed. But who knows? We'll see. If the fight comes off. But interesting for that, I think both guys need to win here because that's well absolutely they need to win every fight really is a must win fight but i understand where he's coming from for both of these fighters it's more must win than maybe you could say in another certain context so i certainly understand what he's saying just do it that's just what it is both guys need to win coming off of their last performances and it's going to really set back the person at 140 josh taylor also got stripped or vacated relinquished a lot of his belts so I think he has like one belt left. So it would probably be for one belt. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. I'm the best in the business and y'all knew that. But I'm out. Introduce. But anyways, that's really about it. Certainly a very decent analyzation in my opinion by Boxing Ego. Um, I, I do not believe that Ego is a bad analyzer. Do I believe that of course his bias gets in there? Yes, to a degree. But in my opinion, he's especially the best new media analyzer. Uh, he overall certainly does have a decent amount of boxing IQ in my view. But anyways, just to talk about further the T. Fima Lopez versus Josh Taylor fight, that's a very interesting fight. It's a very interesting fight because we're going to see if T. Fima Lopez truly can handle the elite of the elites with fighters that can compete with his size. It's going to be very interesting because you were able to beat Lomachenko, which is a great win, uh, but Lomachenko is not a natural 135 pounder, in my opinion, never has been. Uh, always was a bit smaller. Now Lomachenko, in my opinion, still should have had a better showing. In that fight, in my opinion, his performance was certainly underwhelming. But, you know, at the end of the day, once again, you truly get to see how great a fighter actually is when they finally get in the ring with someone that can also compete with their size and their abilities. And Josh Taylor is going to be able to compete with both of those. So this is going to be a very great fight if it does happen. I hope it does end up happening because this is a great fight. I would certainly overall have that on one of the top of my list. Uh, or near the top of my list of fights that I would want to see this year. So anyways, that's really about it overall. And also didn't want to disrespect Ego too much in this video. Overall, once again, it's going to be very interesting to see some of the channel's points about this. That's the reason why I review certain channels. To overall see certain points and discussions of debate. And maybe to talk about certain biased viewpoints, at least that I see. Or over certain narratives. But that's about it. Anyways, that's really about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see what happens in this fight. It's going to be very interesting. But that's pretty much about it for now. See you all later.